Hello everyone. Welcome back to Get Your Play Online. My name is Haley and this is your 7 p.m. bedtime story. I'm so glad to have you all joining me here this evening to read an awesome story. But before I tell you about the book that I'm going to read to you all, I would love to ask you to just stop for a minute and to think about the day you just had. Think about what the best part of your day was. What was the part of your day that made you smile so big? I'll give you a second to think about it. Maybe you have more than one thing. My favorite thing about my day was that I took a break doing all of my busy schoolwork and I went for a walk out, um, out in the gardens that I have at my campus and it was beautiful, the sun was shining, I heard birds chirping, and there was tons of beautiful flowers. So I hope you guys were able to think about a part of your day that made you smile, that made you feel really good. And without further ado, let me tell you about the story that I'm gonna be reading you guys today. It is called, Mama Do You Love Me? And the author, the person who wrote this book is called Barbara Husey. Juicy. Not sure how to say it. <laughs> so this story, I'll let you guys look at the cover, is about people called Inuit people. And the author, we'll call her Barbara, did something really cool. So usually when we'd start reading a story, we would start just on the first page, right? We would flip and we would open our book and we would start from the beginning right here but Barbara instead thought that she could teach us a little bit about the Inuit people and so she included these pages in the back of the book look at all those words and pictures and these words and pictures are teaching us about some of the things that we're gonna learn about and see in the book it even teaches us about our main characters in the book where they came from so I thought it would be a good idea to read this part first before we start reading our story to learn a little bit about a new culture. So let me read to you guys. Though often referred to as Eskimos, most native Arctic people call themselves Inuit, which means the people. One Inuit person is called an Inuk. There are many different Inuit nations, and each has its own language and traditions. Most Inuit live in the Arctic, the area around the North Pole. It is one of the coldest regions on Earth. Regions just means area of the world or place. During the winter, there are months where the sun doesn't shine. In summer, there are months when the sun never sets. Greenland, Northern Canada, Parts of Russia and Alaska are all parts of the Arctic, Arctic region, the really cold area. <laughs> the Inuit in this story live in the northern part of Alaska, where they have lived for more than 9,000 years. Friends, that is a long, long time. And Alaska is actually part of the United States. There are no cities in this part of Alaska. That means there's no towns. In fact, there are even few roads. Hmm. This book shows the way Inuit lived many years ago. Now most Inuit live in a way that com combines the old and the new. So this story shows us how the Inuit people lived a few years back before maybe there was cars or maybe even more recent than that. We don't know. We'll have to see what they are doing to be able to find out. So another thing about this page that is really awesome is it tells us these words that we've maybe never heard of before. For example, have you guys ever heard of a lemming before? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but if we run into these words in the story and we can't look at the pictures and figure out what they mean, we can flip to the back of the book and we can find that word and the author has explained it to us. So maybe we'll do that a few times during the story to try to really understand the story. Okay, so let's read Mama, Do You Love Me? You got some art on the inside that is beautiful. 
One of my favorite parts about this book is the beautiful illustrations. I love them. All right, here we go. Mama, do you love me? Yes, I do, dear one. How much? Here you go. Oops, we got Mama and it looks like a little girl. They have beautiful clothing on. I love you more than the raven loves his treasure. treasure. So there we go. We can figure out what a raven is from this picture. There's a bird right there. That's the raven. And it looks like he has something in his beak. That must be his treasure. I love you more than the whale. The dog loves his tail more than the whale loves his spout. So where's the dog on this page? You guys see it right here? He's snuggling up with his tail, and then we see a whale with his spout, his spout of water right here. <laughs> awesome. Next page. How long? I'll love you until the umiak flies into the darkness, till the stars turn to fish in the sky, and the puffin howls at the moon. All right, friends, I don't know about you, but I've never heard of an umiak before. So this is the first chance where we're going to flip to the back of our book and we're going to do some research. Let's figure out what an umiak is. Let me search and find our word. There it is. All right, it says umiak. These are boats that are made of whalebone covered with animal skins. They're used for traveling and a smaller more commonly known version of this boat is a kayak we maybe have heard of a kayak before so these are just the types of kayaks that the inuit people used there we go we learned something new okay let's find our page so now we know that this is an umiak and they're traveling in it okay and then it said until the stars turn into fish in the sky. So you guys look at the stars and tell me, do you see fish? I see green fish that they've put on top of the stars. How cool is that? It's beautiful. And the puffin howls at the moon. Well, this must be a puffin. It's a bird and it looks like it's singing up at this big yellow moon. It's howling at the moon. Next page. Mama, what if I carried our ptarmigan eggs? Excuse me. Mama, what if I carried our eggs, our ptarmigan eggs? And I tried to be careful and I tried to walk slowly, but I fell and the eggs broke. Oh no. Look at those eggs she's carrying in her dress. And then she falls and they fall all over her place. She says, then I would be sorry, but I would still love you. Should we look up what ptarmigan eggs are? I think, why not? Okay, ptarmigan. These are birds that are found all across Alaska. They are snow white in the winter and they have feathered feet to protect them from the cold. Cool. They lay one egg every seven days and these eggs are a treasured food of the Inuit. Hmm. There are three varieties of these birds and then it lists the varieties and it is, one of them is the state bird of Alaska. So these are really special to the people in Alaska. That's cool that they included them in this story. So there they are. And now we know that those are really important eggs. And so when she dropped them, the mom was sorry. She is sorry to see them break, but she still loves her daughter. What if I put salmon in your parka ermine in your mittens, and lemmings in your mucklucks. Then I would be angry, Mama said. All right, so we probably know what salmon is, right? That's a fish. We probably know what a parka is. That's like a big jacket. We see one right here. A big winter coat is what a parka is. But And we know what mittens are. They're like gloves. But do we know what lemmings and mucklucks are? Well, we should find out. It says lemmings, these are mouse-like creatures in the Arctic. 
They live in tunnels beneath the earth and snow, where it is much warmer than above ground. In the winter, their coats turn from brown to white. They are the only rodent whose fur changes color. How cool is that? And we're also going to look up what mucklucks are. It's right here. These Inuit boots are made with fur. Traditionally, they were lined with moss, but today they are lined with felt. So they're boots. So let's find the mucklucks in this picture. Where do you guys see the mucklucks? Right here at the bottom. She put two lemmings. Do you see them sticking out the top? Those little rodents. That's so cool. So she said, if you did all of that, I would be angry. What if I threw water at our lamp? Then, dear one, I would be very angry. But still, I would love you. And there is our picture. Looks like she's putting <laughs> some water on the lamp right here by my pinky finger. And here's Mama saying, man, I would be angry. But I, again, I would still love you. So the daughter is kind of testing her mama. What can I do to make you angry? And would you still love me? Let's see what else she does or asks about. What if I ran away? Then I would be worried. What if I stayed away and sang with the wolves and slept in a cave? Then, dear one, I would be very sad. But still, I would love you. <laughs> So there they are. Looks like in a dog sled. You can see there's dogs right here. And this is like a sled that you would go sledding on, but the dogs will pull the sled. And then here is the little girl singing with wolves in a cape. I bet the mama would love her baby if she ran away, but she would miss her very much. Or she would miss her, but she would still love her very much. What if I turned into a musk ox? Then I would be surprised. Whoa, look at that animal. That is a big animal and look, it even has horns. What if I turned into a walrus? Then I would be surprised and a little scared. <laughs> look at that walrus. Those are some big tusks. Woo, very big. What if I turned into a polar bear and I was the meanest bear you ever saw? And I had sharp, shiny teeth and I chased you into your tent and you cried. Look at that mean polar bear with sharp, shiny teeth chasing them into a tent. Whoa, that does not look like a nice bear. Then I would be very surprised and very scared but still, inside the bear, you would be you, and I would love you. That is so sweet. Look, inside the bear, it's just a little girl. <laughs> you would be you, and I would still love you. I love that. I will love you forever and for always, because you are my dear one. Look at them. So nice. And look, we're back at our information page, huh? So let's see if there's any other words that we might want to hear about. Well, we know what a dog is. That's the first word on this list. But let's read what they said about dog. Traditionally, the Inuit depended on dog sleds to travel. Now many, many Inuit use snowmo snowmobiles as well. Excuse me, I got a little tongue tied. So do you guys remember when I pointed out the dog sled? Let's flip back and see it. So we're flipping back, there it is. So there's the dog sled. So that's one way that they used to use to travel. And then where was the other one? Do you guys remember what it was called? It was like a kayak, let's find it. Do you remember what the Inuit word for this was? It's called umiak. Very cool. 
All right, let's find one more word before we log off. Let's see. Should we read about igloo? That's a cool one. Okay. This is the Inuit word for house. We know that word. Because wood isn't available in many parts of the Arctic, there isn't enough sunlight for trees to grow, some Inuit build their homes out of snow. We call these homes igloos. The Alaska Inuit, however, generally only use snow ig igloos as temporary hunting shelters. They build winter dugouts of whalebone driftwood and sod. In the summer, they live in tents. Many Inuit now live in modern houses. Let's see if we can find a picture of an igloo. If not, we can just imagine what it might look like. I don't see one yet. I know I saw a tent, so we can see what their tent looks like. Maybe this is an igloo. What we thought was a cave? Maybe. And then let's see where that tent is. There it is. There is the tent right here. Well, guys, I don't know about you, but I felt like I learned so much from reading this story about the Inuit people, about different words, and a little bit about our author. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this story. I hope you guys enjoyed learning. And don't forget to think about your favorite part of your day, how we started off, and what made you smile today. I know reading this story to you made me so happy as well. It was one of the best parts of my day. So thanks for sharing it with me, guys, and I'll see you next time. Have a great night's sleep. Bye.